Why does Peter mean rock? He's told Peter, upon you, uh, I will build my church, the rock. He gave Peter that name because he knew Peter was going to be one of his best preachers of the word. He was going to build the first church. Now, if we can lose our salvation, Sister Melvin, then I can tell you right now that 12 disciples would have lost their stuff. They would have lost everything I have with Jesus. Because every one of them run. Amen? They scattered. And the Bible said in the book of Isaiah that when the shepherd is struck, the sheep will scatter. It was prophecy. But you cannot lose your salvation because God gave you that. The minute you got that on your knees and you ask him into your heart, Ashley, nobody can take that away from you. Not even you can do it. Let me tell you what I think happens. I think God lets you go and he lets you go and he lets you go and he's had enough and he just pulls you out of the game. He just takes you. Or you will be the most miserable person in the world. Because I don't know about you. Maybe I'm the only one. But when I backslid, I was miserable. I, you couldn't stand to be around me. Why? Because I wasn't around God. That's why. And guess what else? Misery loves. And then you're going to find somebody to hang out with that's doing what you're doing so you can feel good about what you're doing. You don't have to feel guilty about it. Let me tell you something. You are so sick of, with guilt. It's, it's horrible. You know you're doing wrong. And, and then, and then we, we let the devil, and listen, this guy, our enemy, our adversary, the devil, he's, boy, you've done it now. You done lost that salvation, son. It's over for you. You tell him, no, I ain't. I, I may have fallen away, but I ain't lost it. You see, you can't take, you can't put me out of God's hands, devil. Now, I'm sure that when I get to heaven, everything I've done now is going to be burnt in the fire, but I'm still going. I'm still going to be there. Now, what is a backslide? Somebody who is what? Fallen out of the will of God. So this is where I get confused about all this. And I can understand that you are. Because I just told you that your salvation cannot be taken away from you. And nobody can take it away from God. But you can backslide. And then the Bible says in the Word that backslide is one enter the kingdom of heaven. So, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Let me tell you what's wrong with this whole conversation that I just had with you. Where that is mentioned in God's word, it's in a different context. It is to be interpreted different. Go back and look at what that passage means when it says backsliders will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And look what that word backslider means in that particular context. And you will find that it may not mean what you thought it meant. That's why you need a Strong's when you're studying God's Bible. Because they here might not mean, might mean the same thing as they here. Greek, Hebrew. Hebrew, Greek. Two different languages, two different definitions. And what was the New Testament wrote in? Greek. What was the Old Testament wrote in? Hebrew. I'm telling you, Brother Randy, I have taken so much of God's scripture out of context, Brother, in the past that it's a wonder he hadn't struck me dead. It's a wonder he hadn't plucked me out. Amen? But we must know what we're reading and in what context it's to be, it is being read in, Brother Keith, so then we can interpret it the correct way. Amen? Now, in some context, um, and again, I'm, I'm not just because I'm your pastor, doesn't mean I know everything. I would like for you to think I do, but I don't. I don't. And there's still things that I'm studying because of this chapter. And, and I need to know that I know because if I'm going to tell you, it better be right. Because 
my salvation. Now, that's not what I've been taught my entire life since I've been in church since I was a kid. And every time I heard you can lose your salvation and you'll burn in hell. You can't. Listen, you can't. Because the Bible plainly says, and I've read it, and I've read it to you, and I'll give you the scripture so you can take it with you tonight, that no one or anyone can pluck you out of God's hand. Your salvation belongs to God. He's the one who gave it to you. If your salvation can be took away from you, then why was Jesus even crucified? You know that in the Old Testament, all the way up until Jesus was hung off the cross, that there had to be a blood sacrifice for the sin. And that everybody who was asking forgiveness, they would touch the head of whatever animal was being sacrificed so they could lay their sin on it when they uh, sacrificed it. Well, he was the final sacrifice. If your salvation can be took, Jesus died for nothing. Because what is salvation? Here's the kicker, and this is where I'm going to close with tonight, and this ought to close and seal the deal for you. Repentance. Salvation is repentance. And where there's no remission of sin, there is no repentance. In other words, if you don't feel guilty about your sin, you're not going to ask God to forgive you. Well, guess what? Sin should make you feel bad and feel guilty. That's why, by the grace of God, Jesus Christ crucified, God glorified, and we're rectified. Amen? So, we can go to Jesus, who now is at the right hand of the Father, the right hand of power. We can go to Jesus, Brother James, and he's sat right beside God, and this is what he's saying. This is what J.R. really means. Uh, don't listen to that. Let me go ahead and tell you what he's really trying to say. He's our intercessor. And he's telling God, that one's mine. My crucifixion allowed me him to have salvation because of his repentance of his sin. And now he belongs to me forever. Because God doesn't go back on his word. He made two covenants, two promises. To prove to us that he wouldn't lie. He told Abraham that he said, Abraham, I'll make your seed as the number of stars in the sky. Amen? Amen. Not only that, he said that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever so believeth in him, here's the promise, should not perish but have everlasting life. That, my friend, that, my beloved, is called salvation. If God tells you it's everlasting, who can tell you any different? You know why God couldn't make an oath to anybody? Because there's nobody of his greatness. And I, I told my brother this. He, 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 it took him seconds. And I get it because it gave me the first time I heard. Do you know, Miss Lena, that we are our reward in heaven? Do you know that you were going to be greater in heaven than the angels are? Because Jesus said, you have believed and not seen. They have seen the Son of Man. But you have believed and not seen. So greater is your reward in heaven. And he's like, how in, how in the world, how in the world, J.R., this is what he said. And he was being serious. How in the world, J.R., am I going to be more important than an angel? They are at the throne of God right now, praying to him, and they have seen him. I ain't even seen him yet. And I said, that's why. Because you haven't seen him and you believe. We believe in something unseen. Yet we believe. You'll never convince me of any different. I see no flawless when I look at the nature. I see no flawless when I look at the human body, how it functions. How our eyes sees, our ears hear, our heart beats, and the minute it stops, so do you. I'm telling you, every single beat, Jesus is sitting there squeezing it with his own hand, and he will continue to squeeze your heart until God says stop. Because he holds your heart. Christ Jesus and Jesus alone. Why? Mount Calvary, salvation. Because you know what? Before 
we got saved, Brother Keith, God didn't even know you. Every prayer you prayed was never went, never went, never flew. It was like, you remember paper planes we used to make? And we would pray, come on, and just stay afloat. Now, this is no lie, and the Lord knows I'm telling the truth because I'm in his house. Me and Stanley, and y'all haven't met my brother Stanley, have you? Me and Stanley took a four, or what, what size is the big construction paper at school? What is that? Three foot by two foot wide, the big piece of drawing paper? You know what I'm talking about. Come on. We made a big paper airplane out of one of those, Brother Jack. That joker was that long and that wide. And we taped the center. And our field, we did have a down slope. Now, don't get me wrong. We were standing on top of that five-acre track. And Brother James, when we drove that thing, that thing just kept gliding and kept gliding. Brother, it went all the way down to the creek. And that was three acres wide. That plane, it was, it was almost like there was a motor on it. I just stood there watching it. Stan was trying to chase it and catch it. He never does. And, of course, it landed in the creek. And that was the end of that one. But we had the longest flight in North Carolina. We flew longer than the first one did. It was amazing. That is what we're doing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you're in flight. Guess who's holding you afloat? He is. The minute you try to take over, you will be just like that plane. You will crash, and you will be wet, and you'll be no good. No good without Jesus. All I'm saying is two things tonight. Number one, your salvation belongs to God. And God alone. And nobody can take it. It's sealed. It's sealed with the blood of the Lamb. Just like the signet ring with wax. Jesus Christ sealed it with his blood. That heart's mine. J.R. Jones belongs to me. Nobody can pluck him out of my hand. Right? But you can curse your wife. Well, you have no influence. So yes, you can mess up your salvation, but you cannot lose it. And, 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 and that one chapter right there is has been taken so out of context and interpreted so many different ways, most Bible scholars won't even discuss it. Because there's so many different takes on that one falling away, that verse 6 falling away in verse 6. <coughs> writer is talking to the saved. He's not talking to the lost. He's talking to the saved. He is telling them that you, you, if you're not careful, you can fall away. You can slip. You can mess up in your walk, and it can cost you dearly. That's what this writer is saying. If you read on past it, I don't know why this is so complicated for them, because if you read on past it, it says once you've tasted the good of God, you don't want anything else. Nothing else tastes this good. I have done many drugs, as I told you, I'm not ashamed of my past. I'm ashamed of what I did in my past, but I'm not ashamed of my past. Nothing has made me feel like the Pentecostal Holy Ghost fire from heaven. I've had the spirit on me so long, all it done was drove me to the ground that I couldn't even breathe, let alone walk. At least when I was tore up, Brother Randy, I could walk. Might have been... I may have took the scenic route, but I got there eventually. But 
boxes and go out. Because we're not clean enough. We're not clean enough. We're not repentant enough. We haven't got that on our knees. We haven't sent you first the kingdom of heaven. We haven't got the faith of a mustard seed. We don't even have the faith of, of a quarter mustard seed. We, I told my brother, I said, Steve, you ought to have been able to walk in that hospital, laid your hands on Regina, told her to get up and walk, and she could have got up and walked. I should have been able to lay my hands on my dad when he was laying there, whittling to nothing, and said, in the name of Jesus, take up your bed and walk. I should have been able to do that. But why couldn't I? I wasn't clean enough. I didn't have faith enough. We're not practicing and putting into conjunction our authority in that cross. That's on us. It's on our sister, Melba. Everybody says, well, we, Ashley, we don't see the miracles like you see on TV and read the Bible anymore. Wonder why? You don't want them. We don't want them, Sister Joab, because if we did, we'd be doing something about it. Now, I'm not going to tell y'all what I told her to be praying for for this church. But when it gets here and it's coming, when it happens, I'll tell you. I'm going to start putting into practice what I already am in position. And I will see it come through that door. And when it, when I when when the last part of the puzzle shows up, you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna stand up in this pulpit and I'm gonna say, I want y'all to look around for a second and I want you to count something. And I'm gonna tell you what to count, and the count that you count will be the exact count that me and her are praying for. And you can mark it down. It's almost 2024. It's not going to be hard to remember when we've done it because it was the weekend, it was the weekend, the week Wednesday after Christmas of 2023. It's coming. I believe it's coming. I have faith it's coming. I, I'm not even going to question whether or not it is. I'm just questioning, hey, am I going to be able to handle it when it does? Amen? I want y'all to stand with me. Remember, the next time you get in conversation with somebody and conversation about losing your salvation comes up. Um, I want you to remind them that God's word says, in his word it says um, that um, no one can pluck you um, out of God's hand. That, 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 that your salvation was given to you by God and nobody can take anything away from Thank you.